Hello students, welcome to lecture 26 of the online course on Photonic Crystals, Fundamentals and Applications. Today's lecture will be on index guiding photonic crystal fibers. So here is the lecture outline. So we will discuss about uh, index guiding photonic crystal fibers, their dispersion relation, we will talk about endlessly single mode fibers, how they work, the scalar limit and also we will discuss about the linearly polarized modes. So let us look into this in more details. We have briefly seen index guiding photonic crystal fibers in our previous lecture. So we will quickly go into the details of it in this lecture. So if you remember, so this is the easiest photonic crystal fiber to understand. Okay. So this employs index guiding. So what happens here you can see, okay, you can actually create this is the core and uh, you can create you know array of holes that reduce the refractive index of this uh, cladding and that is how you know um, you can take the cross section and think of it that n1 is high and n2 is low and uh, the light is basically guided through modified total internal reflection. So that is a very easy uh, understanding of this holy fiber. Okay. So here we need to ensure that the air holes are in a periodic pattern. So, people choose uh, triangular lattice usually okay? and this is otherwise a uniform dielectric medium. So, if you consider uh, a special period of A that is between you know that is a periodicity of the holes and if you consider the holes to have a radius of 0 0.3 A. Okay? whereas the background is silica where epsilon equals 2.1. Okay? So, you can think of these parameters that will give you a uh, holy fiber. So, what is happening at the core? The core is simply you know the location with a missing hole in the center. So, you can ideally think of a whole air hole, the same air hole can be here, then it makes a completely uniform you know holy array or 2D uh, photonic crystal, but you, if you introduce a defect by removing this air hole where the laser pointer is currently placed, then you create this solid core for this holy fiber. Okay? So, one might hope that uh, it would be sufficient to consider some average index contrast between the core and the cladding, but in fact it is not the case, you require a full understanding of the band diagram to analyze you know how holy fiber can actually help you guide light. Now because the fiber has translational symmetry along the fiber axis which is considered as z axis okay, you can take kz that is the z component of the wave vector to be conserved and then you can write the field in the usual block form you can write h x y t equals h x y okay? and it uh, propagates along z direction and it is oscillating in time. So, this is how you can write the magnetic field as a function of space and time. Okay? So, then we plot you know the omega versus k z that is basically this diagram the inset one okay and it tells you about the dispersion relation so if you carefully look into this diagram what you see it is a usual um, omega k plot so this is where the normalized frequency is uh, mentioned and this is where the normalized wave vector okay and here if you see carefully that there is a black line and there is another solid line so the black line corresponds to the light line okay and uh, the other line, the straight line corresponds to the guided mode. So, what you can see that the difference between the frequency of uh, you know in air line and uh, light line, light line and the guided mode is very very small. Okay? So, you can actually plot the difference delta omega as function of the wave vector k z and this is this particular plot, the big one. Okay, that you see here. So, this basically frequency the difference delta omega again the normalized one versus the wave vector which is also normalized one. So, this is how you know the fundamental mode varies and this is how the higher order guided modes 
varies with you know your different wave vectors. So, the projected band diagram here consists of two parts. Okay, so, this is the band diagram that consists of basically two parts. One is the con a continuum of frequencies that is basically the light cone. Okay? So, that uh, represents all the possible extended modes or extended states within the cladding. And uh, after that, it tells you about a discrete set of guided bands with frequencies below this particular light cone. Okay? Now, if the cladding material were uniform, say it had a, um, a dielectric constant of uh, epsilon and that is also independent of omega. In that case, the light line you could have drawn the you know um, lower boundary of this light cone as omega equals C k z by n or you can write square root of epsilon. So, this entire thing is giving you the light cone and this line which is basically the lower boundary of the light cone is given by this straight line omega equals c k z by square root of epsilon. But now, we do not have that uniform uh, or homogeneous material uh, in the cladding. Instead of that, what do you have? You have a non-uniform cladding such as you know uh, a lattice of holes that in that case the light line is also not straight. So, instead it will be given by fundamental you know space filling mode of the cladding which is basically the lowest frequency extended mode of the cladding at each uh, kz. Okay? So, this is the one for uh, this case. So, in this structure however, the guided mode is basically so close as you can see here. So, it does not follow this uh, light line which is for the uniform rather for this case you basically have the line which is very close to the light line and usually because of this closeness it is more uh, convenient to plot the difference that is delta omega which is omega LC minus omega that is the difference between the light line and the guided band you know rather than plotting the frequency itself. So, this is basically this that exists delta omega versus the wave vector and um, we you define this delta omega in such a way that it is uh, positive for the index guided mode. So, you can see here for any uh, k value the light line has got higher frequency. So, better you do it like you know omega L c minus omega other than doing the uh, you know reverse of it. So, you make sure that that delta omega is basically positive. So, for each kz, let us now find all the extended modes of the infinite periodic cladding, okay? that means without any co, okay? for all possible transverse uh, wave vectors that is kx and ky. And then you will be plotting the resulting frequencies as function of kz. Okay? And again, the lowest frequency for each kz will basically define the light line that is basically the lower boundary of the light cone. Now, this extended modes can be analyzed by considering the periodic cladding by itself. Okay? And one need to consider only kx, ky in the irreducible brilliant zone of a triangular lattice. Okay? And the extended modes take the block form of a plane wave that is uh, e to the power i k dot r okay? and it has to be multiplied by the periodic envelope function that is h k x y. Okay? So, h is the magnetic field and we have discussed why dealing with magnetic field is easier than dealing with the electric fields. right? But if you have information about one, you can always find out the other one. So, the increased permittivity of the core introduces one or more uh, guided modes by pulling down modes below or beneath the light line. Okay? And because they are below the light line, that means you know this modes must decay exponentially into the cladding. And further below the light line they are pulled, the faster the decay will be. Right? Makes sense. And for the case of a holy fiber, okay, you can see a doubly degenerate band is localized in the core. So, you can have either the you know, polarization along x or y 
okay so you can see ex or ey like this so it can actually support a doubly degenerate band which is which is localized in the core and this is how the field pattern will look like so this one we call as a fundamental mode because you know it's like a circular kind of pattern of the same um, you know electric positive electric charges so what we can see here is that electric field polarization are nearly orthogonal everywhere and um, here you can see that the left one is mostly this mode is purely uh, ex and uh, on the right side here you can see this mostly ey okay and uh, the green circles over here they actually show the location of the air holes in this triangular lattice so what you see here that in general the fundamental mode is defined as the mode with the largest uh, you know kz for a given uh, omega or you can say they have the smallest uh, you know omega for the given kz so it means it will have the lowest uh, or smallest uh, largest kz will mean you will have uh, smallest uh, wavelength associated so that will be the uh, fundamental mode so this is analog to uh, of the two degenerate orthogonal linearly polarized lp01 mode that typically propagates within a you know standard single mode silica fiber now in this case uh, due to large index contrast and uh, six fold symmetry the two orthogonal modes are neither purely linearly polarized nor they are exactly related by a 90 degree rotation okay so here also you can see from the figure that for the larger values of uh, uh, kz three additional guard bands are basically localized here you can see okay so the here you can basically see that the three different uh, values are overlapping and where do they come from they actually start appearing uh, below the light line okay at uh, kz a by 2 pi equals 2 so from here they start appearing okay and uh, you can see that one of this band okay is doubly degenerate so this is the fundamental mode hmm? so why it is called doubly degenerate because uh, for the same frequency you can actually have two different orientation or two different modes possible okay so this this uh, modes are doubly degenerate and is essentially a higher order version of the fundamental mode here you will see okay here also you can see doubly degenerate okay for certain frequency band okay and um, with an extra nodal plane perpendicular to the direction of propagation right uh, however the other two uh, bands are basically non degenerate so none of these uh, higher order modes can be excited by a plane wave uh, incident in the z direction because the source and the modes uh, would have different symmetries so with the understanding of the basic modes which are uh, excited in the holy fiber we can now see how this fiber can act as endlessly single mode fiber okay so in an ordinary index guided waveguide as one goes to higher and higher uh, omega that means smaller and smaller lambda you will see that more and more number of guided modes are basically pulled down below the light line so this is your light line and these are the extended modes okay so you will see more number of uh, you know with higher omega or smaller lambda you will see more number of guided modes are uh, pulled below the light line that is true and uh, eventually one approaches the ray optics limit where you know the guided modes uh, are described by continuum of angles which are basically greater than the critical angle of the total internal reflection okay so you can actually um, consider those as you know the modes propagating however at uh, as first pointed out by Burke et al in 1997 okay this uh, need not be true of the photonic crystal fibers right so this particular plot shows the frequencies 
for a plane of glass of thickness a okay and uh, that has been normalized okay and permittivity to be 11.4 okay now photonic crystal fibers can remain endlessly single mode regardless of the wavelength so that means it's only limited by the material properties and we'll see how it is possible so we also saw that you know the holy fiber that we considered could guide up to four bands okay so fundamental guided mode and then there could be like three higher order guided modes so it is not definitely endlessly single mode there are possibility of other modes as well however it will still display the essential feature of this phenomena that is single endlessly single mode because as one go goes to higher and higher um, kz okay or you can say larger omega okay um, you do not get more and more bands okay it means the number of bands typically never exceed uh, four so you can actually think of you know that you know one could reduce the number of modes to just one okay uh, by having the you know whole radius to 0.15 a however it will weaken the strength of uh, confinement it means if you if you go below this one you will never uh, excite this modes okay and you will be only dealing with the uh, and single mode case so only one compromise will be there it will weaken the strength of the confinement now the question comes why are the higher order modes absent the reason is that the effective index contrast between the core and the cladding in the case of holy fiber decreases at small wavelengths rather than remaining fixed as it would have been the case for any homogeneous cladding so because of that the strength of confinement becomes weaker for smaller wavelengths okay and um, higher order guided modes okay remain above the lowered light line okay and uh, to be more concrete you can define the effective index of a mode as c k z by omega okay so the factor by which the phase velocity you know uh, omega by k z decreases is this one okay so typically the phase velocity would have been c but you know it decreases uh, by this particular factor to give you the new phase velocity okay and this effective index equals uh, the ordinary refractive index for plane wave in a homogeneous medium right so with this understanding you can say that at a given omega or frequency an index guided mode will obviously have you know larger effective index than that of the light line so to decrease the you know to show the decrease in this uh, effective index uh, contrast with uh, wavelength you can consider this particular figure okay which plots the effective index uh, ckz by omega versus the vacuum wavelength which is lambda by a or you can say it is uh, 2 pi c by omega a right so what do you what do you see here so this is basically based on the band diagram which is given here right so here you can see the light line okay and these are some of the modes so in the in the limit of small lambda that is here the effective indices of both modes okay and the light line you can see both are basically approaching that of the bulk silica that is 1.15 only when you are going for larger uh, wavelength you will see there is a deviation okay from the guided modes and the light line right so it means there is an intuitive explanation for why the effective index contrast would decrease uh, with wavelength right so here also it again merges so the fundamental that is the light line mode 
of the cladding wants to be concentrated as much as possible in the high dielectric region right so if you consider lambda by a to be much much larger than 1 that is you know your lambda the periodicity is much much or lambda the wavelength is much much larger than a that means what it will look like uh, the periodic media will look more or less like a homogeneous medium in that you know light cannot uh, uh, entirely lie within the high dielectric okay because the field cannot vary faster than the wavelength so in that case what will happen as we go to shorter and shorter lambda more of the light will be able to fit in the dielectric between the holes so when you consider the limit of lambda much much smaller than a yeah, that is the case when your ray optics limit will be applied and light can be simply guided by total internal reflection and it, it remains entirely within the dielectric material okay and in that case the effective index uh, will be approaching the index of the dielectric material itself that is 1.45 now since the core is also made up of the same dielectric material the effective index of the guided mode must always uh, approach the same value as the wavelength decreases that is what we see here so precisely these are the limits seen in the figure uh, where both the light line and uh, guided mode approach the index which is 1.45 that which that of the bulk uh, silica in this particular case right so here the value of uh, the effective mode is basically 1.29 okay and this is the case when your lambda by a is like 10 which is much much less larger than 1 okay however as you can see that this explanation is not complete because if you take an example okay and think could the effective index contrast decrease so fast that the modes become less and less confined to the core for small lambda or perhaps the effective index contrast does not decrease fast enough to asymptotically exclude the higher order modes so which is the case but I actually you know neither of these is basically the case that is happening because when you consider the limit of kz going to infinity we obtain a finite number of modes with fixed field patterns okay and of course in a real material we must eventually take into account the fact that you know epsilon is basically a function of frequency then it is never fixed okay and uh, the material may cease to be transparent to some uh, frequency means it may become lossy as well and on the other hand we can equivalently keep omega fixed and try to rescale the structure in that case the above analysis is exact you can apply that particular analysis there so the endlessly single mode property in this case means that we can make the waveguide arbitrarily large and still guide a single or actually a doubly degenerate waveguide mode through it so this could be useful for reducing the effects of uh, material nonlinearities although this is eventually limited by the fact that the bending laws tend to increase with the increase in the mode size right let us now discuss the scalar limit and uh, linear polarized modes in the, in the case of this uh, photonic crystal fiber. The key to a quantitative understanding of the large KZ limit is to realize that this particular uh, regime is asymptotically described by a scalar wave equation which is independent of KZ. Consequently, for a large KZ, the modes approach KZ independent, okay, uh, linearly polarized field patterns. Indeed, we shall see that you know this uh, scalar limit is useful for understanding 
other op other fiber phenomena as well such as the existence of photonic band gaps. Traditionally, the scalar approximation in electromagnetism is uh, formulated only for structures with a small dielectric contrast. So, the dielectric function for such a medium can be described as a sum of a constant epsilon c and a small perturbation which is delta epsilon x y which is much much smaller than the epsilon c. Now, in that case if we neglect uh, terms which are of the order of delta you know del uh, grade delta epsilon then the Maxwell's equation for the electric field can be written as this ok. So, this is the typical uh, form that we have already seen before ok. So, in this approximation the different components of electric field are decoupled from one another although they are not completely independent because of the transversality constraint which is basically del dot epsilon e equals 0 ok. Um, this constraint allows E z to be determined from E x and E y uh, for example ok. And if we consider this results with Bloch's theorem for the waveguide modes, it follows that we can write the transverse x y components of the electric field vector E in terms of scalar um, function psi x y ok which describes an LP mode ok in this particular form that E t equals P x x cap plus P y y caps psi x y e to the power i k z z. So, here P x and P y are basically constants that specify the amplitude and the direction of uh, polarization and the transcript T stands for transverse. So, we can understand that this particular uh, function psi uh, basically satisfies the Eigen equation. So, if you put it there you can see that some operator operating on psi gives you back the psi and some constant. So, this is an Eigen equation ok or Eigen mode equation and this is reminiscent of the Schrodinger's equation of uh, the quantum mechanics is not it. So, in this equation if you see that this uh, grad t ok represents the x and y components of the del operator or you can say del t ok. So, or nabla whatever you want to call it and here you can also see k t that is basically the transverse wave number ok and it is defined as square root of omega square by c square epsilon c minus k z square ok. So, these are this is the basically the transverse component of the wave vector right. So, in contrast to this traditional approach a pho photonic crystal fiber generally has a large index contrast and for this reason it may be surprising that a photonic crystal fiber can be accurately described by a scalar approximation. So, how does it work? Suppose that in addition to the small variation which you consider to be delta epsilon, we also have uh, some low uh, some very low index region something like air holes with a dielectric constant given by you know epsilon which is epsilon c minus del uh, epsilon. So, in this case you know because this has got a very low index it means this del epsilon is basically large and positive ok. And the key fact is that for large kz, large uh, uh, kz um, the fields within this low index regions will also become very small. It means um, index guiding is happening right. So, we may uh, therefore use scalar approximation in the region where you know this del epsilon equals 0 ok and simply set psi equals 0 where del epsilon is not equal 0 for the equation this one right. So, these are the two regions we can uh, understand. So, where it is positive you actually um, have uh, this particular uh, wave being guided right and uh, where the difference is not there you can simply put that you know the field is also 0 that means no wave guiding taking place.
So, seen in this particular way, the effect of air holes is basically to impose the boundary condition on shine. That makes sense if you go back to the first uh, cross sectional schematic we have shown, those are the air holes giving you the boundary between the solid core and the you know the cladding okay and uh, that is where you know you can think of high and low index medium and uh, light is basically getting guided based on modified total internal reflection okay so to be more uh, explicit the fields uh, fall off exponentially into the low index region with a spatial decay constant of kappa which is given as square root of uh, kz square minus omega square by c square into epsilon. And in terms of kt, you can write kappa as this, okay. So, you can actually find out what is the decay constant for the field to fall inside this low index region that is the air region. The field in this region can also therefore be neglected when kappa is or the of the order of kz uh, and which are much much larger than kt. That means, the field decays much faster than the transverse psi oscillations. Okay? However, uh, the condition kz much much greater than kt okay, is equivalent to the condition that the effective index okay, uh, of the mode that is c kz by omega approaches the material uh, index that is square root of epsilon c and that we have already seen um, that it is true for large frequencies right um, which also correspond to large kz. So, why, why is it important? The scalar limit for large kz has uh, several interesting consequences. The first one is that if uh, delta epsilon is uh, uh, delta epsilon is 0 as it is for our holy fiber, then psi basically satisfies an Eigen equation and uh, it can be written as minus uh, delta square psi equals kt square psi and um, with psi equals 0 in the holes. Okay? So, in this equation, okay, neither kz nor omega appear uh, explicitly right so thus uh, the values of neither kz nor omega is going to affect the solution of psi that you can get from here or the eigen value kt square that you are going to obtain from this equation so what we can conclude we can conclude that for large uh, kz the modes basically uh, approach fixed field pattern obeying a dispersion relation which is basically this one omega square equals c square times kt square plus kz square divided by epsilon c. The second point is that you know each mode psi in the scalar limit which is also the so called LP mode right it corresponds to a several vectorial solutions of the Maxwell's equation for the same psi square intensity pattern and the same value kt right so there are basically two possibilities if psi is a non degenerate mode then we get two vectorial modes something like psi x cap and psi y cap which corresponds to doubly degenerate linearly polarized modes as we saw in that uh, you know diagram electric field diagram before and now, if psi itself is a doubly degenerate state with two solutions, which is like psi 1 and psi 2, in that case, we get four vectorial modes, okay, like psi uh, 1 x cap or you can say psi uh, L x cap and psi L y cap for L equals 1 and 2. So, L is missing here, it should be L equals 1 and 2, right. So, for finite kz, the scalar approximation is not uh, exact and such degeneracies will break that means, you know, leaving at most doubly degenerate pairs. So, the states basically divide into linear combinations uh, corresponding to different vectorial eigenmodes. It is uh, precisely such LP modes 
which are nothing but a pair of doubly degenerate modes which corresponds to a non-degenerate or you can say monopole like uh, shy and four nearly you know degenerate uh, modes which includes one doubly degenerate pair corresponding to a doubly degenerate that is like you know dipole like uh, shy and the third case would have been that we can now predict whether the k z tends to infinity limit is going to yield a finite or an infinite number of guided modes again if we suppose that you know delta epsilon is zero for simplicity so we can write that in the low index region that is del epsilon region which completely surrounds the core then in the scalar limit the field will behave like uh, the familiar quantum uh, problem of particle in a box with infinite potential barriers so here the box supports uh, you know arbitrarily many modes which are limited only by the approximation that your kt must be much much lesser than kz right so on the other hand for a connected structure okay like the one we have uh, when the eigen values kt are large the scalar field shy will be able to leak out between the holes because th there is still material okay and that can uh, act as you know leakage uh, between the holes and the modes are not guided so mathematically this situation is identical to a two dimensional photonic crystal of uh, perfect metal rods okay where shy can be or uh, where epsilon can be considered as minus infinity so these are like uh, perfectly metal rods and for the case of tm polarization right so there kt square corresponds to the 2d uh, frequency eigen values that is omega square by c square and shy will correspond to epsilon or ez not epsilon ez okay so the band diagram uh, for this analogous 2d metallic structure which is like this so these are like metal with uh, perfect metal but they are forming an array right now so it's a triangular array of uh, metallic rods so you can see this will be the brilliant zone okay and the band structure is shown here for this analogous 2d metallic structure okay so it exhibits a well-known property of metallodielectric uh, photonic crystal where there is a band gap starting at kt equals zero and uh, extending so this is one band gap that you can see okay and this is also another band gap which starts from kt because this is kt okay uh, and uh, you can uh, yeah so here the frequency omega a by 2 pi c is of the order of kt okay so it it starts or you can say it's equivalent to kt here so it starts from kt equals 0 and extending to the minimum of the first band so this much is the band gap for this metallodielectric photonic crystal right so this finite gap in turn corresponds to a finite number of discrete kt localized modes which are supported by a defect okay so another important feature uh, that you can see in this particular figure is that you know in this uh, scalar metallic limit okay there are also ordinary photonic uh, band gaps that appear here between the higher bands of the structure right so the two band gaps which are shown in this shaded yellow so this one the lower lowest band has a low cutoff frequency characteristic of the metallic structure and uh, these bands are equivalent to the modes of the holy fiber in the scalar limit that is basically the limit where kz is very large okay so with that we'll stop here and we'll start the discussion of uh, in detail analysis of band structure 
or band gap guidance in holy fiber in the next lecture. So, if you have got any queries regarding this lecture, you can drop an email to this particular email address mentioning MOOC and uh, Photonic Crystal on the subject line. Thank you. Mm -hmm.